Welcome to Reef Talk. I'm Scott Anderson with Mile High Reefers. I'm Steve Rotter with Rotter Tube Reef. In today's Reef Talk, we're going to kind of talk about nitrates, controlling them in your reef tank, and how each of us are doing it. So to start with, I'm a huge fan of bio pellets for my carbon dosing. First of all, let me interrupt you. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. (laughs) What are nitrates for those of the reefers out there who don't know? Okay, so basically nitrates are the organic buildup in your tank, right? So when your fish goes to the bathroom, we have that whole nitrogen cycle that happens, right? So your fish goes to the bathroom in the tank or your food breaks down in your tank, and it produces a whole bunch of ammonia in your tank, which is absolutely lethal to your fish, which is why it's such a pain to quarantine sometimes because that breakdown can kill your fish. So it goes from... Ammonia, which is nasty, to nitrite, which is less nasty, to nitrate, which is the end of the nitrogen cycle, unless you get into the deep sand bed stuff where supposedly it goes down to nitrogen gas at the very end, right? So the idea is you take a poison and biologically change it to something that's only mildly bad for your tank but over time that kind of does build up and there are kind of many ways to take care of this situation so i'm a huge fan of carbon dosing and then the natural filtration stuff that i'm getting out of my um, reef tank itself so right now i've got almost 200 pounds of live rock in my tank and that's what's actually making the biological system happen so that's what's changing the ammonia to nitrates and then from there um what does rock have to do with removing fish pee or ammonia good point yeah and i so basically what we're doing is we're going from we're growing a bunch of bacteria on there, right? So all these little rocks have bacteria growing on them. And then those bacteria are actually eating the ammonia and changing it to nitrites. And then there's more bacteria that are changing the nitrites to nitrogen. Now in the live, in the really beast, big pieces of live rock. And what are those little rocks that you've just got, Steve? It's got huge amounts of actual surface space that you put in your sump. Oh yeah. The Marine pure, Yep, and it should be the same thing going on in those mirror mirror blocks, where inside of those, you're going to end up with anaerobic conditions, which theoretically are going to change your nitrates to nitrogen gas and complete the nitrogen cycle itself, because it's an area of low oxygen where those bacteria live that can actually remove the nitrates. Right, and... Good question, and I'm going to just interject with this. The live rock, the more live rock you have, the more surface area you have, which means the more bacteria can live, yep. and the more bacteria, the better, so it breaks down all that stuff. That, that's where we're at with this. So what I chose to do after reading up on it is I purchased the Marine Pure. It's man-made. It's got thousands and thousands of crevices, including microscopic crevices. It's only, what, <clears throat> four inches by eight inches by eight inches it's just it's like a square and it just sits in your sump right and it's not just the outer surface of it it's what's inside it's thousands of nooks and crannies whereas you won't have that much if you were to take a rock in your aquarium and cut it in half there on the outside the inside and every layer the square footage is insane the amount of area that the uh, um, beneficial bacteria can populate. So that's what I did in a recent video. I just spoke about, I did that for a couple of reasons. For one, way more beneficial bacteria. For two, I can remove some rock out of my aquarium, which allows the fish more swimming space. They like that more. And um, it's less areas for the detritus or fish crap to get trapped in, and then it'll decay and rot. And then that's a problem, causing your nitrates to go higher. So anyway, I just wanted to interject that. I, no, that- I've only had it for, what, two months? And they say around three months is when it fully yep. populates with the bacteria that you need. But they say if you get this Marine Pure, you really don't even have to do water changes, which I'm still doing a weekly water change. Um, 
It's supposed to be very good for your tank. So that's what that is. Go ahead. Now, with that, I know Bulk Reef actually did the mm -hmm. calculations on how much surface area was in that. And Marine Pure blew away the best live rock, even what Pukani, what they're calling the best, and by the calculations they did, was the best. It just was so much more had so much more surface area. It was very impressive. Now, I didn't go that route. I have massive amounts of live rock, and it's not a problem in my tank. But for someone like Steve, that's a great idea because you don't have near the rock I do. Right. And for very good reasons. I mean, I just like a lot of rock. And there's actually some issues with my aquascaping, the way I did it. It's more for looks than what's actually for the best for the tank. Yeah, and it looks phenomenal. It's really nice. Uh, you also have the height yep. the, that I don't for the tank. Um, I prefer the shorter, longer aquariums, and I just I just didn't want to load it up with yep. uh, rock. I didn't want to take away the, from this yep. uh, fish their swimming space. That's just me. Yep. I've seen a lot of tanks that are my size or smaller, and they just jam pack the thing with rock. And it's almost yeah. as if they leave three inches swimming space between the glass and the rock, and the, the fish are going like this. And they're, like, barely swimming, yeah. which is fine. I love the way it looks, but I feel bad for the fish. So it's just, as with yeah. everything, it's my personal preference. Well, that's the fun part of this hobby. It's whatever you like. There, and there's good and bad on both ends. Um, but back to the nitrates. Um, so that's your basic nitrogen cycle. Now, what's interesting is you got to get those nitrates out of the water and i'm not a huge fan of water changes i do them more for other reasons i'll do them to get rid of detritus i'll do them to fill up my quarantine tank but i don't really do them to get rid of nitrates i'm huge on the carbon dosing for that and for that i use a bio pellet reactor with lots of bio pellets in it and i know you've kind of tried the sugar dosing how's that worked for you steve very well it's ridiculous how well it works. So uh, before I answer that, sure. what, what's carbon dosing? So carbon dosing is basically you're putting um, a carbon source in the tank, right? In the course of, in the case of sugar, the sugar is the carbon source. In the case of bio pellets, it's the bio pellet itself that's the carbon source. Basically, it's a sugary plastic that bacteria lives on and um eats and then as the bacteria eats that they are um tumbled and then they are skimmed off by the skimmer and that's what's creating the carbon source now none of this stuff is set in stone as to why it works and how it works so i'm not gonna get too into that because to be honest i don't fully understand it from what i'm hearing about from a lot of other people it's not fully understood because people are seeing phenomenal results with um carbon dosing who don't even have skimmers so I can't even begin to explain how that would be working. I want to but look I mean, into that more. I, I want to do some research and dig and see what I can find because, like you said, no one really knows, but it does work. Yeah, and, and, it, and it works with a lot of different products. I know you like the sugar dosing, but people use vodka. They use vinegar. Basically, any sugary product will work. I like the bio pellets because they're just so easy. I got my DIY reactor, and... I have to service that thing every two or three months. It's just ridiculously easy. And my nitrates are always low. Well, that is the difference. I'm doing the same thing you are, but I'm not. I don't need a reactor. I don't need uh, a pump to run the thing. Yep. I don't need to buy the carbon pellets. Yep. Um, I'm just using table sugar. And it's sugar. It's exactly what Scott's using. But it's table sugar. Why not vodka? Well, because vodka is more expensive than sugar. But vodka works really well. It's gonna, it's sugar based. Sugar is sugar, and <clears throat> pellets that Scott's using are their sugar as well. It's gonna work the same way. The only thing that I'm doing is they say to start really slow. Um, I do. My thing is. Uh, I'm doing one teaspoon of sugar in the sump for every 60 gallons. So if you have a 125-gallon tank, I'm sorry, it's a half a teaspoon of sugar, okay? 
So I do one teaspoon of sugar for my whole tank every day. You want to start slow, start with half a teaspoon every night for maybe a few days. After three or four days, do the full teaspoon. Now that's what I'm using. I would suggest starting slower than that, like a quarter teaspoon, and then move up to a half a teaspoon a day. So a quarter teaspoon for every 60 gallons, that's the rule. I double that, whatever. Um, my nitrates were pretty much out of control because I have a huge bio load. I think it was up to 60 or 70, uh, maybe, I don't know, seven or eight months ago. Within a week and a half's time, it was zero. Yeah, that's fantastic. Dead zero, and it stayed there. So something happened in the tank. Now, do I do the sugar dosing all the time? No. I only do it when I need to get those nitrates under control kind of quick. Now, Scott will do the uh, um, the pellets uh, all the time. They're always running in his, in his tank. Yep. Now, that's fine, but then some people say, well, you shouldn't use sugar maybe because, you know... Well, there's no you know because Scott's doing it every day. Yep. I What's it, the difference between that and using table sugar? But the, again, I'm only doing it to get those nitrates uh, under control and check. Now, the way yeah. I choose to um, maintain it is the good husbandry <laughs> like Scott does. But I try not to use the sugar. What I do instead is I rinse my foam block in the sump every Week when I do my weekly water change, I vacuum the sand deep um, every two weeks. I make sure that my um, sump sock is changed out every three days, but I'm not using those anymore. I'm using the router tube, take the media out of there, and I replace it with a new media every three days. You want to make sure that your mechanical filtration is replaced or cleaned every three days. That's what I'm doing. And then when they're a little out of control because I feed a little too much or something, I'll dose with sugar because you want to get that down to a manageable level close to zero. So that's that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and you know you're right. The sugar's the cheapest, easiest way to go. Um, I went the bio pellet reactor because it's just always on, and you can't overdose with bio pellets. I've got like a liter and a half of bio pellets running in my reactor. It's ridiculous. How and, long do those last? How long do those pellets last? Oh, they last a long time. I... I think I upgrade, I add more bio pellets like every year. Yeah, it's been a year since I put more bio pellets and they really? last a long time. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, they're not cheap. I mean, my last bag of bio pellets, it was like a liter, it was like 30 or 40 bucks. So oh, it's that's not bad. It's, but it's not cheap. And then if you look at the reactors, um, the cheap reactors suck. And then mm. anything nice is expensive, right? So that's why I have a DIY one. Um, so do you find that you're. Nitrates are pretty much under control with the reactor for those of the yep. uh, reefers looking to get one. It works pretty well. I, you know, like I said, I'm not big on water changes. I don't do them very often. I do them for other reasons than nitrate control. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely do them, but it's not like a primary method of controlling nitrates for me. And, you know, if I'm lucky on my nitrate test, I use the Salifert test, it'll come up with like a tinge of pink if you look at it sideways which puts okay. you like two on the cell effort test and that's the most most it ever has well, that's really good that's very good now i've not done this because to me it seems like a little too much of a hassle um i just don't want to i don't know i've been thinking about it but i'm not sure i probably won't do it <laughs> a refugium a refugium compared to the pellets what do you think you know that i have a refugium it's there i think it grows more cyanobacteria than anything um i i don't think we get that much um bio pellet re or biological stuff removed from the refugium it's kind of a nice to have i think it's better for things like pods and stuff like that but i mean if you don't have the space and you got a small yeah. um you get a small sump or something like that really the refugium i don't think is worth it i mean especially when you look at what's underneath a lot of tanks right yeah you've got You've got like a one foot section that they're putting a refugium in, and I don't think that buys you much of anything. Right. To and be honest. Then you need the lighting, and a refugium, by the way, is. It's just a little tank inside your sump that you're putting rock and or sand or algae in, and a lot of people just have calerpa in there, and that's all it is. And then that 
has a light over it, the Calerpa grows, and then you harvest the Calerpa out of it. And that is how you're removing the nitrates and phosphates. And definitely to a lesser extent, phosphates. People get so upset when you say it removes phosphate. It does. It's just not. Um, but the idea is, is the algae grows and then it sucks that stuff out of the water and then when you pull it out you have physically removed it from the water so it just keeps feeding on it the problem is, is you have to have a really big section to do it and i think my refugium it's, it's got to be two feet by two and a half feet something like that and i know that for the brief bit of time or for the four months or whatever it was two years ago that I did, wasn't running bio pellets, my nitrates went up quickly and my refugium couldn't keep up with it at all. And that was on the 90 gallon. I couldn't imagine what it would be like on this 210. It's not enough to keep up with it. You'd have to go with other methods. So. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm always for the easiest and quickest. Yep. Um, so that wouldn't be for me. I, I, I'm not afraid of it. Look, you, you, you keep... This is a little bit of work, and that's a little bit of work, and yep. this is a little bit. I don't want to do it. So no. your method is something that I would definitely consider. Um, but in the meantime, I just take a teaspoon of sugar and yeah. it in the sump, and I'm done. Yeah, I, you're having success with that? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, it's great. I keep um, a bag of sugar in a Ziploc bag yep. under my aquarium. And then after I feed the guys, I just take a half a teaspoon and just drop it in the sump and I'm done. And you know what? If I was doing a nano tank and didn't, oh, yeah. want, you know, I didn't want equipment hanging around or anything, right. I would definitely go with that. A small skimmer on a nano tank, dose some sugar. That'd be brilliant. Yeah. And you do need, um, a protein skimmer when you do the sugar dosing. Um, you do need to have that water oxygenated and also, um, the creation of bacteria will also, deplete your oxygen levels in the water um so you want to be aware of that so that's why you don't want to dose too much sugar too quickly um it it could be well not dangerous but just something to be aware of one other point when you do the sugar dosing i've been asked this an awful lot um your water will become a little hazy that means it's working it's fine there's nothing wrong so you'll go from a crystal clear saltwater tank to a little milky very slight haze and that goes away within half a day all right you wake up in the morning if you dose at night it's fine you dose again in the evening it's going to haze up just a little bit i mean you can still see everything inside it's just not crystal clear that you're used yep. to so that's normal don't worry about it and i've even noticed something similar to that with the bio pellets last time i added oh, yeah? a bunch of bio pellets on there i was getting this white film on the inside of the tank and that took a while to clear up it was a few days of that and there's probably a little extra on the surface of the water and on there but it all goes away it's really not a big deal it's just kind of that whole break-in process going on hmm. well that's great info i didn't know that and you've got me more interested in the uh the reactor i don't use any reactors on my aquarium i don't use calcium reactors um, with weekly water changes, that keeps the levels pretty proper. I rely on um, Mother Nature, even though she can be a yep. bitch sometimes. And um, water changes, everything is nice. The pH, alkalinity, I don't add or dose anything. That's just me. I like to keep it simple and nice. No reactors, nothing. Now, your choice, not you, Scott, but other people, will be different than mine everything's different i had that stuff yep i was using it and i didn't notice too much difference so i just decided you know what? let me take the gfo reactor out and a little difference but not much i'm not going with it that's just me so you guys just listen to us and listen to others do what you feel is going to be best yep. for you and experiment you know um and just do a lot of reading yeah i'm kind of the opposite i like a lot of reactors <laughs> Definitely the calcium reactor. I run a carbon reactor. You know, GFO, I'm not 100% sold on. I don't have phosphates, never have, but I use a little tiny bit of GFO. Probably the reason why, but I've never seen any phosphates in my tank ever that have been detectable. Hmm. So I put it on more as just like a um, insurance policy, but I don't think it actually 
does a whole lot. I mean, I I've never had I've never had a phosphate problem. I'm sure people are going to slam me for this, but at least in my tank, I've never had a phosphate problem. And I don't know if that's the carbon dosing. I know it will pull phosphates out. They claim it doesn't pull as much as the nitrates, but I think phosphates are a bit overrated. I think so too. Um, I've never had an issue with that either. Like I said, you get a good salt. You do a weekly water change on schedule. Believe it or not, the fish and the corals, they kind of get into that routine. They look forward to that. They know when it's coming. It sounds silly, but that's what I've been told. Who knows what they're thinking for sure. My dogs know when they're going to eat, and it's 4.30 every day. If it's 4.15, they come up to me. They know it's time to eat. I'm sure the fish, they're smart. They're going to know. It doesn't matter. Um, yep. You get what I'm saying. I'm just relying on water changes, a good protein skimmer, cleaning your mechanical filtration. Everything will kind of take care of, this, of itself once you get that bacteria built up. And Scott uses the pellets. I kind of like that idea. I might have to check that out. And that's the fun thing about this hobby. There's a whole bunch of ways to do it. You don't have to copy what any one person says to right. do it. It's right. just experiment, see what works for you, see what's working for other reefers. Yeah, I learned the general rules like quarantining and and all that good stuff, and then you break some of the rules, ones that can be broken, and you just do uh, what you want to do. So I said we were going to stop this at 10 minutes, and it's 22 minutes. <laughs> all right. Well, I think this will be a good one. This um, will be a really good one, yeah. Um, now, you guys, um, as usual, you know, comment. Um, Scott's with Mile High Reefers on YouTube. I'm with Rotter Tube Reef. We have our own separate channels, but we wanted to just hang out and talk with each other because we'll do that on the phone sometimes. And Scott had the idea, you know what, let's do this video thing. I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, so we're going to see how this goes. Let us know what you guys think. Um, we want to try and keep them around 10 minutes, but it doesn't look like it's going to work out that way, and that's fine. Um, if you want to be on the show, just drop us a note. Uh, get a hold of him at Mile High Reefers. Get a hold of me at Rotter Tube Reef. Um, or just send a comment here. Think of an idea for the show. You want to come on and talk about it. We'll do the three way Skype with video. It'll be really cool and we can all learn from each other. Or if you just want us to talk about something. And we don't claim to be experts, so this is just two reefers hanging out, having fun talking. Right. I'm definitely not an expert, but we've paid our dues and we we're just experience. sharing with you what we know. Yep. We're experienced. I wouldn't say that we are working in the Steinhardt Aquarium. <laughs> right. Well, everyone, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for checking out the video, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you.